Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Pioneer Plaza. I want to do a little shout out today. I was uh, watching KHON last night, and they have a new business segment on there. It's brand new, first premiere showing, uh, Business Matters, and it was in their evening broadcast. It's so good to see that some of the local media is picking up the theme of highlighting successful businesses in Hawaii. And that's what this show is all about. This show, uh, Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker, is about highlighting those individuals and those businesses that have made it successful in Hawaii despite all the challenges. And we've heard of what all those challenges are, the cost of living, the Jones Act, uh, the regulations, the taxes, et cetera, et cetera. So there's acknowledgement that, yes, they're out there. But there are people who have made it successful. They're doing well. And, it, and it's important that we highlight those success stories. And I'm uh, very thankful that uh, KHON has decided to join me in highlighting those success stories here in Hawaii. Uh, today, we've got some more success stories to talk about. Uh, th there's a firm called Schlack Ito uh, that's got two very dynamic attorneys. They probably have a few other attorneys there, too. But the two that we have on the show today is uh, Matt Matsunaga and Tony Donez. Uh, they're going to be here today and share a little bit about themselves and about their firm and how they're out there helping businesses uh, in a lot of different ways uh, and helping the law profession in Hawaii. So welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you very Tony. much, Reg. Uh, the last time I was here, we were talking about workers' comp issues and uh, very much appreciate the chance to appear again. Yeah, and that's a big expense item in Hawaii, and it's, it's uh, important to control that. And I guess you, and we had a physician with you, I think. That we had Dr. Was... Scott McCaffrey yeah. and talk about how to get an injured worker back to work and hopefully with minimal consequences to his or her family. And that, that helps control the costs and Absolutely. keep things down. Absolutely. And that's important to, to do that. Uh, today, you've got another guest that you brought with you, Tony. Uh, Tony, welcome. Thank you for having us. Yeah, of course. Um, now, you're relatively new with the firm. Uh, that's correct. I've been with the firm approximately a year and a half now. And I was formerly um, uh, a prosecutor, a deputy prosecuting attorney oh. but before I joined this firm. Which prosecutor did you work for? Car <laughs> the, the Carlisle by any chance? No, no, no. The, 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 the current uh, The key, current guys. Key, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, well, it's great to have you on the show. Thank it's you. great. And we're going to talk a little bit more about you and your background here shortly. But, Matt, um, <laughs> for those watching today that didn't catch the first show that you were on, can you just give us a quick brief uh, background on, on who you are and what you've done? and. Sure, Rich. I don't know how far back you want me to go, but I was born in Queens Hospital. <laughs> Good. <laughs> now, let, let me start with, uh, I was actually like you, Rich. I was a CPA working mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. for Price Waterhouse. Yeah, great and, firm. And uh, my father came to me one day and he said, what do you think about going to law school? Because if you have an interest in politics, it's really helpful to understand the law. And uh, he graciously said that he and my mom would pay for my law school education at Georgetown, and so Georgetown, I, I, I agreed. I got tired of the fast cars of the CPA lifestyle, <laughs> so I went to law school. Well, you know, a few people know this, but another definition of CPA is constant party animal. That's true. Yes. That's so, true. Yeah, you know, we work hard, but we party hard. And there but, were better lawyer jokes than there were <laughs> CPA jokes. Yeah, well, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, can you just explain real briefly? Uh, your father was an influence. Uh, who was your father? My father was uh, the late United States Senator Spark Matsunaga, and he always believed that the best way to seek equality and justice in life is by changing the laws, and that's what led him to go to law school. That's what led him into politics. That's right, and that took him to Washington. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And so I went to Georgetown Law School. And Great school, of course. Upon graduation 33 years ago, <laughs> I uh, returned to my birthplace. And uh, I've been practicing for 33 years, um, the first 20 with uh, another firm, Carl Smith Ball, right. and the past 13 with Schlack Ito. Great. And we're hard workers. We're not, we're, we're schlackers. We're not slackers. <laughs> right. That's good. That's a good way to remember it. Um, and what, what does the firm do? Is there any particular specialization? 
Our firm is made up of uh, former big firm attorneys who sought a, a, a more desirable atmosphere to, to practice with, and we do primarily uh, business transactional law, although we have expanded in recent years to uh, beef up our, our litigation department, and of which Tony is mm. a very proud member of our litigation uh, folks. But we, we do a lot of um, commercial leasing, we do a lot of um, corporate business uh, planning, we have a nonprofit tax attorney, we have a um, PUC environmental attorney, um, yeah. pretty much a, a broad spectrum of business aspects, and then we also have our litigation team to augment that. And I noticed, I think there was a real estate component in there too a little bit. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what what area of real estate? I mean, what what is it? Is it uh, the conveyances? Is it uh, rules, regulations? Is it building? Well, we have uh, commercial leasing to help out landlords who own okay. real estate. We also have acquisition folks who are familiar with buying and selling uh, commercial real estate. Um, we have those who are familiar with development of real estate, mm -hmm. whether it's through mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. condominium statute or through other aspects. But pretty much a wide variety. Very of good. If you, you have land, what do you want to do with it, and how can we help you? How to maximize the value of that land, too, yeah. And what area do you spend your time in? I spend a lot of time in just uh, business transactional things, and I, I kind of uh, equate myself to like a Swiss Army knife. So <laughs> if uh, a client comes to me and says, Matt, I have this problem, how can you help solve it? And so I do quite a bit of real estate, quite a bit of corporate, mm. um, quite a bit of governmental affairs where I can utilize my experience in the state senate. And uh, a lot of people in business don't realize the importance of how the state government or city and county can actually help them achieve their goals. And so that's one of the aspects um, that I help advise my clients on. Well, it almost sounds like you would be a good corporate counsel in the sense that, that whenever there's a legal issue, regardless of what that is, they come to you and you, you're like the first point of contact. You can either take care of it yourself or point them in the right direction. Uh, that's what I hope to, to, to be. And I hope that uh, my clients will see me as, you know, here's the problem. Help me figure out how to solve it. And I can tell them I might not be the best person to solve the problem, but hopefully I can identify all the issues and at least solve the problems I can and point you in the direction to where others can help solve those problems. Very good, well that's good to know. The, um, Tony, switching to you a little bit. Uh, you, were you, how long have you been in Hawaii? You've been here for a long time. Oh, been you here, yeah, I've yeah. uh, yeah, been, uh, been in Hawaii since 94, from Tacoma, Washington go. originally. And, uh, you came over here to thaw out a little bit? Well, uh, the military <laughs> sent me here, truth be told. And then I went to graduate school and I got a, a master's degree in linguistics and then I went to law school uh -huh. after that. So now you can speak Japanese? I do speak some Japanese, yes. Very good. And some German, Oh, actually. But. And just out of curiosity, because I'm a veteran as well, which branch of the Navy or? Army, U.S. Army. Army, okay, very good. Um, I, I came over in 73, a, a few years before you. and. It went yes, over that, was some, that was some time mm -hmm. before me. That yeah, was some, some <laughs> a little bit. But you, you came over and, and what, after you got out of the Army, you decided that you were going to go to school and you started going to school here? Or uh, how that, did that that's play correct. Out? I, I, I did know at that time that uh, the linguistics department at University of Hawaii was rather prominent and uh, very strong, so that was something I wanted to pursue uh, from a department that was as good as UH. So I went into linguistics and I started teaching and I went to law school. So you started teaching, you, you actually taught in Hawaii for a little while. That's correct, yes. Uh, I was there, uh, taught for about 10 years. Very good. All right, what triggered you to explore a law career? Well, it's something that's been in my brain for quite some time and actually I, I, I was telling Matt uh, today that uh, it was literally one of these stories where uh, you know, I wake up one day and I said, well, no, that's, it's time to, to start going to law school. It was something, I, again, it had been uh, thinking about for some time. And then I just woke up. I said, nah, today's the day we start. Wow. And I went and did it. It's kind of a big jump. It's a, a change. It was. It was. Uh, considering, uh, well, law school itself is a full-time sort of job yeah. for three years. I was, and it's not cheap. It, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I was working at the time, and um, it, 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 it was a team effort with my family, certainly. Very good. 
Well, congratulations. And did you know at the time? And, and some of these questions are triggered <laughs> by the, you know, some members of the audience are, are watching this and they're intrigued, you know, about how somebody can, can be 10 years or more into a career and then all of a sudden say, you know what, I'm going to do something different. And you did. Yeah. And, and it's worked for you. Uh, and so when you decided to make that cut and go into law school, did you know what part of law you wanted to focus on or did that kind of develop over time? Well, uh, yes, yes and no. I, I did have a strong idea of what I wanted to do, but you understand when you're beginning in a career, things change. Um, I did want to do civil litigation, which is what I'm doing now. However, I also wanted to get court room experience, mm -hmm. trial room experience, which often civil, civil litigation does not give you because cases tend to settle out of court before they go to trial. Well, that's usually the preferred way, yes. right? Yes, yeah, yeah. It it's cheaper. It's yeah. cheaper for the client. Uh, so, uh, and that's one reason why I went to the prosecutor's office, because it gave me the trial experience and the courtroom experience that I wanted. So before I joined Schlack Ito, I had done close to 100 trials, actually. Wow. wow. That's, that's a good experience, though. I mean, it, it helps. <clears throat> well, let me ask you that question. Does that help you in your negotiating skills? I mean, is there a lot of negotiating involved? Or uh, just there's, there's, a, there's a lot of negotiating, and the variables in the variables uh, in that, that take place during a civil settlement negotiation are actually quite different than uh, those mm -hmm. on the criminal side. The criminal side, it's like, here's what the fine is. And here's how here's how long the jail sentence is going to be, or the prison sentence. It's just that's it, and it's you know. Uh, it sounds uh, almost like the tax code. Yeah, and, and <laughs> civil side is much more nuanced. There's much uh, a greater number of variables going on, and so it's just it's really different, very very different. Very good, but that's uh, and and you did that for a number of years, and then what what triggered you to leave the prosecutor's office to go into private practice? So I don't know if Matt knows this part of the story, but I had actually been. Um, having uh, one eye on the firm for about uh, two years, and um, then once what attracted I, you to the firm? Um, the so there's you know, I, I look at work as being in four quadrants. There's like good people doing good work, good people doing bad work, bad people doing bad work, and like bad people who just like randomly happen to do good work. You're starting to sound and, like an attorney. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so, so the firm I'm at now, I can confidently say it's amazing because it's good people doing good work. Good. And that's, for me, in my experience, it's a very rare um, combination. Well, let's take a quick break. And we're going to come back in about one minute. And I want to just follow on to that question a little bit about how that process worked, you know, maybe from both of your perspectives on how you identified the firm and how did you go through the process of, of landing that, that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii. Uh, Reg Baker, we're going to be taking a quick 60 second break and we'll be right back. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps him from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, and every other Monday at 3 p.m., you can join me at Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. So please join us every other Monday at 3, and we'll see you then. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. We're talking with a couple attorneys today and talking about the process of going to law school and selecting a firm, getting hired, and some of the different uh, areas of law that's practiced in this firm and by the individuals. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, business, a lot of commercial connection to this. Uh, and one of the trick questions I'm going to ask them towards the end of the show is how, what, was, what would their advice be uh, in having a company come to them for legal support. You know, if they needed some help, what, how do you work with an attorney? What's the secret of working with an attorney? Uh, and there's a lot of people out there that think they need an attorney, but they're not quite sure exactly how to approach it. And so 
I'm going to leave them with that thought there for a minute. We'll come back uh, in a few minutes and talk about that. But Tony, you were talking a little bit about you kind of had identified the firm that you wanted to, to join with, and you were impressed with the, the type of practitioners that they had there, and that was a group that you wanted to affiliate with. So how did it go from there? Did you reach out to them directly, or, or, you know, or did Matt call, reach out to you, or how did that all happen? I, I, didn't, know, I didn't know Matt um, until I joined the firm. But um, <clears throat> I did know uh, one of the name partners of the firm, Carl Schlack. I knew, I knew Carl um, for approximately two years before I had joined the firm. And I knew the firm first through Carl. Very good. And Matt, what is the process when somebody approaches a firm or there's maybe another one of the partners have an interest in bringing in somebody? I mean, what's the process? Do they go through you know, an interview, a uh, sequence of interviews, or do they talk? How, do, how does that sure. work? First, the, the partners or members of the firm would gather, and we do have monthly meetings. Um, we talk about needs of the firm, and uh, in Tony's particular case, there was a need for assistance in the litigation department. Our um, then uh, sole litigator was um, Derek Kobayashi, is our litigation mm -hmm. partner. We've subsequently added another litigation partner named Reggie Niwao, but Derek was just overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. and. He needed help and he needed help fast. So um, one of the partners had recommended Tony and we uh, of course scrutinized his resume very closely and we brought him in for interviews and um, I'm going to interrupt three interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few, you know, gave him um, various uh, tests, you know, and, and no, I'm kidding about the test, but the interviews, you learn a lot about the, the sure. candidate. And well, they may not be written tests, but you probably ask some pretty interesting questions to see what kind of response he, you'd get. Yeah, um, I, I know with, with Tony, I think the things that stood out were his um, ability to write well, and um, that's definitely helpful when you're doing a lot of paperwork oh, yeah. and pleadings. Well, communication, that's always key to you know, almost any profession. That's yeah. good. I remember. Um, one of the, the questions I was asked, or one of the tests I was given, was you know adding up a, a long line of numbers. You like know, the and, phone book. Well, it's, it yeah. was a big, long line, yeah. and they wanted to know if you could do it with, you know, without looking. With the 10 you know, key, touch, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so the question is, you know, add up these numbers and tell me what it is. Back in the old days, to pass the test, the, the CPA test, which you couldn't use a calculator. No, you back weren't in the allowed days, to use a. Right. And, you know, it was all longhand. But but the answer was, what do you want it to be? What total are you looking for? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Now, that would have passed before, but now that gets you in jail. So you can't do that anymore. But yeah, yeah. yeah there's always little trick questions that are thrown at you. Did you have any? Do you have any experience with a trick question somebody may have asked? Um, no, sorry. In this, no. <laughs> Nothing that you're willing to disclose. <laughs> we weren't yeah, I think that, yeah. is, I think that is actually the more accurate answer. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> No, but the interviewing process is always fun, and it's always very intimidating. You know, you get some younger people. Now, you were fortunate because you had a few years under your That's belt. Uh, but some of the, there's, there's some young people that graduate from law school, and sometimes going through the interviewing process can be an intimidating uh, you know, process. Uh, any thoughts and advice on how a young professional just getting into law school might approach uh, you know, that process? I think a couple of things that I would say is, number one, do your homework about where you want to work, if it's, in a, if it's in a law firm, something medium or large sized, or if it's with a solo practitioner, mm. or if you want to work with the government, for example. So think about what you want to do, do your research, and then really focus on making sure there's a good fit. And I, in my experience, that really means a lot. And I'm speaking from what I've heard people in, the, in hiring positions say. So sometimes it's not so much about grades or it's not about you know uh, maybe other things you've done. It's about how well you fit with the people that you'll be working with 12 hours a day. Well, and that fit is very important <clears throat> because you want people to be able to hit the ground running. You know, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time retraining or reorientating. I mean, you want people to come in with the skill sets you're looking for so they can be put to work right away. And you know, sorry, but they need to start generating revenue too. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's a business. So that's good, and it's always good to know, I guess, when you're talking to a firm or a company, 
a little bit about them so you can determine from the outset where that fit might be. That's good. Um, now, and the same can be said for a business looking to get legal support, legal help from a firm. Is it the same type of um, you know, research needs to be done? Yeah, I think with respect to a business, um, you have a multitude of different types of businesses. I mean, you have the very sophisticated businesses who would have an in-house counsel, mm -hmm. who would have great familiarity with the different law firms in town and lawyers and their expertise and areas of practice. Right, right. And those are the, you have to be on your toes uh, to, to pass scrutiny in order to get into the door for um, a potential talk story to see whether or not it's a good fit. And you're going to be competing with um, other attorneys in town who are known to be the top set at, in that area of expertise. And that's, that's a much, um, that's a dog and pony show. Mm. And then at the opposite end of the spectrum are just ordinary people with their ordinary problems that need a, an attorney. And a lot, a lot of times those are situations where it's a friend or a relative or a friend of a friend and they just come to you and saying, hey, I got this issue where my neighbor and I are having a dispute about the fence, you know, what do we do, you know? <laughs> and and it, you have a wide spectrum and all different kinds of problems in between. Yeah, and I guess sometimes it's surprising how easily these things can be resolved. Maybe just a quick phone call and, and things can be addressed and, and they just don't, so many people are adverse to any type of confrontation. You know, and it gets uh, interesting. Do you agree with that? Is that oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely, Raj. I mean, um, when Tony gets involved, it's typically when things have gone south. Mm -hmm. And so um, the two parties had an agreement and they both contractually are bound by this agreement, but one party disagrees with what they should or should not be doing under the agreement. And now you have a dispute. And oftentimes, instead of sitting down and trying to work things through, or, or maybe they've tried that and it hasn't worked, then one party decides to file a lawsuit against the other. Right. Yeah, and I think in today's world of internet accessibility and to be able to go online and research, there's an awful lot of templates out there that people can use. But you know, they need to be customized to local laws and, and rules and regulations. I mean, just because somebody goes out and downloads a contract for something, I mean, doesn't it make sense to have an attorney take a look at that to make sure that it's oh, a good contract, that absolutely. it can be enforced? I, mean, I can't tell you how many times people have come to me saying, oh, I, I want to save money on legal fees, so I've done the drafting myself. And I'm very frank with them saying, well, it's going to cost me more to revise your agreement <laughs> to make it comport with Hawaii law than to just take one of our own forms and use that. Right. No, that makes sense. You know, I, um, and I have similar experience in the tax world, you know, doing a tax return. It would be easier for me to just process the information and do the tax return rather than take something that had already been done and try to review it to see if it was done correctly. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I have to reprocess it anyways. You know, and I would imagine that you know a template contracts would be very similar. I mean, you already know what compliance is or what it should be, and you've already got that built into the system. It's easy to. So crack we shouldn't out. use TurboTax then. Oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> No. no, actually, you know, for low end stuff, it's okay. But you know, I, I think you know, once you file the return, it's it's okay. But you know, going to a court, you know, to, to handle a potential dispute, yeah. I think it's much more important to have a, a professional involved right from the get go. You know, I mean, don't wait until it becomes a problem. It's better to make sure it's it's clean before you get to that point. Yeah, the sad thing is, Reg, this happens quite a bit where uh, a client will come to me and say. Oh, Matt, I got this problem. I'm saying, I, I asked him, well, where's the agreement? And, well, we just shook hands on it. Yeah. And I said, oh, you do have a problem. If you had come to see me earlier and spent a little bit of money up front having a sound agreement, then you would save a lot of money on the back end. Sure. Yeah, and a lot of heartache. And, and yes. You know, I yes. mean, it can be very stressful. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I've been an expert witness before, and, and I've had to prepare and get ready for, for an appearance. Fortunately, never had to appear. It was always settled before, you know, which was good. It means our preparation was solid. But it's stressful. It's stressful for the, the people that's going to be there. It's stressful for the, the clients. Um, 
trying to avoid that is probably just having good contracts up front. Yes, absolutely. Very good. Um, Tony, getting back to you a little yes. bit, um, can you describe the type of practice you're building over there? You've been there a year and a half, year and, a half you know, yes. and you're, you're supporting others there, but you're kind of developing your own? Uh, yes, and so most of the work I do, again, revolves around real estate. And again, you know, that's sort of the, the focus of the firm, broadly speaking. And uh, I do, I, I, currently I do uh, some breach of contract cases mm -hmm. regarding uh, conveyance of, of property or, or real estate. Um, I, 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 do, I do summary possession, what we call summary possession actions, which are normally called like evictions. I do mostly mostly plaintiff side, so I represent uh, landlords in landlord tenant disputes, uh, almost without exception corporate. We're not talking about personal mm -hmm. uh, landlord tenant disputes, but corporate uh, landlord tenant. And then um, I, I'm working on what are called quiet title matters, where Transfer title. Uh, well, no, la a landlord wants to clean up title. Oh, for example, okay. where where you go back in in time and look at the chain of title, where we would say it's cloudy, and then you work th with the court and correct those things. So those are uh, generally uh, where I'm working right now. Very good. The um, we got a couple minutes left. You know, and occasionally I'll get involved in something. A client will ask me to get involved. Uh, and you know, without going into a lot of details, uh, sometimes there, there'll be a person that has a contract to have something installed. And for one reason or another, they decide they don't want to do it. Uh, in order to get out of a, a contractual arrangement like that, where they may have already made a deposit, they've got things done, but no work's been started. Um, you know, I guess, what's the best way to approach something like this to cancel that contract? Does it make sense to you just get on the phone and talk to the contractor and say, I've changed my mind, give me back my deposit? Because they've got a contract there that, that can be enforced. Or is it best to have an attorney kind of take a look at it and kind of look at, at the different clauses that might be there for you know termination or, or what? Any thoughts on that? I think it depends on your relationship with the contractor and what the reasons are for wanting to get out of it. Mm. but. In my experience, if um, you have a reasonable person on the, sitting on the other side of the table, which isn't always the case, just talk to them and say, hey, the situation has changed. How do you feel about um, canceling this agreement? And especially if the economy's strong, contractors got 100 other jobs to yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. And if it's a consumer, and it's a consumer protection issue, the next step is to maybe talk to the Office of Consumer Protection and say, mm -hmm. hey, this is the situation I'm in now. Do you think there's a chance that I can get out of this contract? And, and then finally, maybe go see an attorney and see what the attorney can do to help you with your problem. Well, it, that refreshing response, because you don't have to just jump right into the attorney you know, approach. I mean, you can try to get it resolved, you know, depending upon that relationship. So that's, that's great advice. Very good. Well, we're wrapping up. Um, really appreciate you both being on the show. It was very interesting to hear, uh, you know, how you started your career, and then, as they say, you pivoted and yes. uh, went in another direction, did it quite successfully. So, mm -hmm. congratulations! Thank no, thank you for having me. Thank you. Very good, well, Matt. Always good to have you on the show. Thank Look forward you very to the much. next one. Um, My pleasure. So we'll uh, we'll see you in a few months. Thank you very much, Rich. Thank you. All right. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we're here today talking about law practice in Hawaii and, and one of the, the premier firms uh, and uh, two of their associates that work with them. Uh, got some good advice. We're looking forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, aloha.